Coach Gavin, how's it going today, man? I'm good. How are you? Oh, hanging in there. Uh, you know, looking at the card, you and I are talking a little bit off camera about this card. I'm really excited about what you guys are doing at Pittsburgh Wrestling Club with the uh, the card coming up on December 22nd, live on Rockfin. Uh, yeah. The backpack made it. The backpack is going to make the trip yeah. across the across the Lehigh from Lehigh, right? He lives in the Lehigh Valley now, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, he's trained at Penn. Uh, he's, at, he's at Penn. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I, we got a lot of PA versus PA and a couple uh, Whipple guys versus district 11 guys, which is pretty cool. You know, in Pennsylvania, that's kind of the, um, uh, I don't know. I don't know if you say it's a rival, but like the argument of which area is better Lehigh Valley or Whipple, you know? So that's pretty cool that we have that. <clears throat> Opposite ends of the state too, right? East versus yeah. West. Yeah. I love it, man. I love, listen, Whipple wrestling. And obviously, if, you, if we're talking recruiting and you're recruiting, if you're not camped out or one of your coaches and can't, is not camped out, well, obviously, you're in the whip heel. But right. if you're not camped out over there in the Lehigh Valley, you're, you're missing out, man, because you're, you're even your middle-of-the-road guys at, that, at, at there, and, you know, not the, the top cream of the crop, you right. can get really good guys who can be All-Americans. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the whole state. Obviously, we're in a very good state. Um, and the other benefit to our location is we're also really close to Ohio, you know, um, which is obviously another really tough state. So it's only about two hours here from north, you know, to, from here to northeast Ohio. So we're in a heck of a location. That's that's for sure. Keith, when you look at it, I don't believe you won the state title in Pennsylvania. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. I was third my senior year um, and seventh my junior year in PA. And you won – the NCAAs in 2008, right? Yeah. That's that. Listen to me. I think we have Dolph who did it. Brian Dolph. Okay. Yeah. Dolph did it in Ohio. He never won Ohio. Yeah. But I know Phil Davis never won PA. You never won PA. And that's just off the top of my head. Yeah. I yeah. mean. Phil, Phil and I are the same age. So it was kind of cool when, you know, we both, we both did it that same year, you know. So that was wild. pretty neat. That is wild. The depth is just, it is in. Yeah, where it's not up for debate. Like I told Fletcher, I said, this isn't a debate. PA, it is, it is numbers. It is, if you look at the, the D1 qualifiers, and yeah. like once every three or four years, either Jersey or Ohio kind of knocks you off for the most All-Americans, you know, and, and, and that's happened in the last five years, I want to say, because I took a lot of pride when Ohio would get them and yeah. you know, working with all these other guys who are from other states or I work with PA guys. You know, that's always something I'm like, oh, yeah, we got you this year. But, mm -hmm. man, Pennsylvania's depth, it is unmatched. And like you said, you're sitting in such an amazing place. Like, I'm in Chagrin Falls. Like, I'm in the heart yeah. of Northeast Ohio wrestling. Mm -hmm. It takes me an hour and 45 minutes to get there, to get, yeah. to, 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 get to Fitzgerald, where your duels are. Right. Okay, obviously, this event's not going to be there. But right. your location in Northeast Ohio, is, it is, it's prime. Yeah. Yeah. We love Ohio too, you know, so that's, uh, it, it's nice to get in there and, and get some recruiting and, and you're right though. I mean, there's a lot of depth here in PA and, and I think that's kind of the, the thing about our program is uh, people develop here, you know, and it's not just me, like uh, it's happened here a lot, you know, with, uh, but Tyler Wilson in the national finals, but I think he was fifth in the state of PA, you know, um, we go all the way back to Pat Santoro won two national titles here and he never won the state in Pennsylvania. Um, so it just kind of happens here a lot. Well, I mean, we currently have guys on the team that are getting, getting really good that uh, were under the radar in high school. And so it, it's fun to, it's fun to, to, to help these kids develop. And I think that that's something that has always happened at Pitt that we're just trying to have it happen uh, on a more consistent basis. You know, talking RTCs, that is, the, it is like a, an RTCs arms race at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's wild. And I look at you in Wisconsin and I kind of put you guys, you know, you're, you're, you're right there. You're hosting these events. Yeah. You got Pletcher, you know, and you can snag a couple other Pittsburgh athletes, but mm -hmm. man, Nittany Lion Wrestling Club, Spartan Club, NJRTC, yeah. which is two division one programs. Um, yeah. What Roby's doing at Virginia Tech with their RTC. Um, Cyclone RTC, RTC is coming on. And then, um, you know, Ohio RTC, which you were a member of. Yeah. Uh, you know how this RTC model works, Keith. How yeah. important is it for you guys to develop a strong RTC? You're hosting events in the middle of a pandemic. It's tough. Yeah, yeah. But how do you guys develop this RTC and how important is it to the growth of pit wrestling? 
Yeah, well, it's obviously huge for our, for our wrestling program at Pitt. Um, I think, you know, as you mentioned, we got we have Pletcher here, and, and you know, for him, it's a, it's a homecoming. And then we also, Nico Megalutis, the same thing, you know. Um, he's here with us, but Nico's obviously, um, he's, he's still recovering from an injury, so that's why he's not wrestling um, yet, but we hope to have him back soon. Um, and so, we, you know, we, we can get those high-level guys that are, that are from here, get them to come back, and, and uh, you know, those are the kind of guys that we're trying to have in our RTC because they're just great examples. You know, they're great people. They're really into wrestling. You know, they're just great examples of how you should train and how you should live. And so those are the kind of guys that we're trying to have in our RTC. It's not, um, you know, we're, we're quality over quantity kind of is the, is the attitude here. But, um, but, yeah, I think it's going well. I think with these events, uh, you know, Penn State put out the the blueprint of like, hey, you know, you could do this, and and it's beneficial. Um, I didn't obviously, I wasn't even thinking about it until uh, uh, Coach Kale reached out to me about our guys wrestling, and, and it just didn't work. Uh, they were looking for some different weight classes, but I just started, then I was thinking like, well, why don't we do one? You know, and and I actually I wrestled with a guy at Pitt that is into you know does production uh, that kind of stuff, and I talked to him about you know, hey, can you do this? And he said he said he could so from there it was all right well let's do it so nico won't be wrestling at the event but we're going to be calling matches together i'm kind of excited about like that because i've always yeah, been yeah, on the uh, outside looking in with him man right yeah yeah nico's um, you know he's obviously he's in the area and he's he's around our, our program still all the time he's just he's injured and so he's he's recovering but uh but he was dying to get it to the event anyway. So I was like, all right, well, we can't have spectators. So you got to get on the mic. And he, he was, uh, he was excited to do that. And he obviously knows our team very well. So he'll, he'll provide some good commentary there. You know, looking at the matchups up and down, uh, I, I love the fact that you got the backpack. We already talked about him, but uh, the main event, I talked about these guys yesterday in uh, Luke yeah. Pletcher, your volunteer assistant at Pitt. And then Dave Habit is an athlete for Cliff Keen uh, wrestling club in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Mm -hmm. I love the main event. I love the main event. I love talking to both guys, two of the nicest guys you'll ever want to meet, but uh, making that a main event, it's an intriguing matchup. How do you like that matchup? Yeah, we got lucky with that. Um, You know, we're trying to get Pletcher a match. We wanted Luke to be, you know, to be the main event. And we had a couple that just, that just kind of fell through. And, and actually the RTC cup, the RTC cup was on flow. And I, I was, you know, watching like everybody and, uh, I saw Habit there and I was like, oh, that's one that we could reach out to. But I wasn't sure if he was going to wrestle because he wrestles for Sylvania. I wasn't sure if he was going to wrestle in the, um, whatever they're calling the world championships now. Uh, this oh, world week. cup. Yeah. World cup. Yeah. And so I called Shirella and he said, you know, actually he thinks he'd be really interested. And, and, uh, you know, Josh got back to me that night and we made it happen. So yeah, I'm really excited about it. I think it's a, it's a, it's a great matchup. It's a great opportunity for Luke too to wrestle somebody with, um, you know, it's been on the scene for a little bit and, you know, uh, habits of a bronze medalist in the European championship. So he's got some good freestyle experience, which is, you know, what, that's what Luke needs right now. So we were talking about age differences yesterday, both guys, it was kind of awesome. And then Luke, I said, Hey Luke, how old were you in 2008? He's like, yeah. oh, I'm like nine <laughs> years old or 10 years yeah. old. And I was like, well, that's yeah. old. Gavin won the NCAs. Yeah. What's crazy for you is, you just wrestled competitively. How did you feel? How'd you feel on that flow? What was a 195 bracket? Yeah. You weren't cutting any I weight. I'm guessing you're smaller, right? Yeah, about one. I weigh about 195 now, you know. I love so, it. Um, yeah, that's kind of the thing. Like that, you know, we had nothing going on because we can't compete and you can't recruit because the dead period is, is forever long. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, they put that event together at 195 pounds. That's what I weigh. And I was – I was wrestling uh, a couple times a week and, you know, the guys on the team were like, you should do it. So I went for it, but I honestly felt better than I thought I to. I was, I got worried about how I was going to feel because everybody I talked to was like acting like I was insane for doing it, you know, but then it was like, uh, I mean, we're just doing wrestling matches. It's not like we went out there and fought to the death or something, you know, it's like, <laughs> it wasn't, it's not that, it wasn't that big a deal. Uh, and so I kind of wish, you know, if I could do it over again, it's like, man, I wish I just kind of, treated it as normal instead of like I'm the old guy I gotta be smarter about it it's like I should just done it normal but but either way it was fun you know how many matches did you wrestle total three who'd you all wrestle I wrestled uh uh Rashid first then I wrestled Luan and then uh, Nate Jackson so how much prize money did you walk away with 
uh, 2,500. That's pretty good, dude. That's better than, that's yeah. better than you've done in any, anything else, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, you would have to win the U S when, like when I won the U S open, you got more than that back then. I don't know what you get now, but it's, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that was harder to do when the U S open, you know? So you wrestled Lawan pinned, he pinned, uh, Gabe. Gabe Dean, right? Yeah. And then how bad did you beat, uh, Rashid? Uh, nine, seven. Nine. Dude, kind of I love match. it. I love it. I love that's everything I about it. Wear. Yeah, that's when I started to wear after that one because that was like that was harder than it than than I needed it to be. You know, wow. <laughs> I, got, I was down like four zero, and it's like, man, this isn't. This is gonna make for a long day. But uh, but it I was. I love fun. that swim you do. I love that swim where you like we will like almost let guys go around you and then you'll swim and come over. Ah, uh, just yeah. nasty stuff, man. I tried too much out there because I was, I was relying a little too much on the tricks and should have uh, been a little more fundamental. But, again, it was fun. It was a cool experience. It was nice to get that perspective again, you know, of, of being the athlete and, and kind of relating to my guys a little bit more. Mm -hmm. I love it, man. You didn't get the big, like, Happy Gilmore novelty check, though. No. Remember? No. Remember Happy Gilmore got, like, 18th place? He's like, I want a check like that. Gavin, I could yeah. see Gavin rolling up onto the plane with a check like that just being goofy. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah, awesome yeah. so awesome oh, yeah. you know but hey once again you got to throw your hat back into it and then that yeah. good for your guys to see i would think i think what, what how was yeah. that conversation with with your athletes when you came back Keith? they loved it you know they were all about me doing it from the they they kind of um i mean they really kind of talked me into it you know it got to the point where if i didn't do it i was going to feel like a punk you know uh because it was they just talked about it so much and and then uh so yeah, it it was good. They all loved it, and and I think it was fun for them to to watch me put a single on again and go out there and do it. You know, That's so awesome. So it was all fun. <clears throat> okay, so speaking of your athletes, uh, I'm looking at Nino Bonacorsi, and I'm looking at Mickey Philippi just off the top of my head on the card. Yeah. I like their uh, the matchups are I'm looking. Sorry, Nino's got Travis Stefanik, and then Mickey has back backpack. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, we're excited about those. I think that uh, Mickey in particular, you know, Mickey's more of a folk style guy, you know, but so is Ethan Lezak, you know, and, and so I think they're very similar uh, style wise. Um, at least they weren't folk style where they were, they were very good mat wrestlers. So uh, it's that's an interesting to match up to see, you know, Ethan's been doing more freestyle than Mickey since Mickey's still in college, but uh and that's going to be an interesting one. I'm interested to see how that goes. Uh, they had a very close match in Kyle. Mickey, Mickey beat him at the Cliff King tournament. Um, was that two years ago now? Yeah. And uh, it was, you know, it was pretty nip tuck. So I'm excited to see how this is going to go in freestyle. Uh, so that's a good one. And then, you know, Nino's match is, is pretty cool because they were, they were uh, old high school rivals. You know, Nino lost to Travis in the state final. And it was a very good state final match, uh, Nino senior year. So, that's cool to kind of run that one back and, and see how that would go. They haven't wrestled yet in college, um, even though they've been the same way. Uh, so it's been a while to see uh, or that since they've wrestled. So it's cool to see how that one's going to go. All right. We got Ulu mm -hmm. versus uh, Darian Cruz. Cruz out of the Lehigh Valley. Okay. And then Ulu is from Tajikistan or Turkmenistan? Uh, Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan. Tur Kyr Kyrgyzstan. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Samat's been with us for a couple of years now. He uh, he has an interesting story. So he, you know, he, he wrestled in the World Championships in 2015 when they were here, and I think that was when they were here. Vegas uh, 2015. Worlds 2015. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so he stayed in the U.S. since then, and and he was been around Pittsburgh. Um, and then when I so when I got the job here, he, I mean, he he reached out, said he wanted to meet, and we talked, and I called. Uh, a guy I know that speak that speaks Russian and and we talked through like a translator like that and basically got him to hooked on to the RTC and he was gonna wrestle for Kyrgyzstan, you know, in the worlds. Um, but he's been having issues with his with the green card process. So so he hasn't been able to compete overseas because he's worried about getting back in the country. Um because he must stay in the US. But you know, since then he's won the Bill Fairley, won the Dave Schultz, and he won those tournaments pretty easily. Uh and this is gonna be his first time competing in a little while. So it's, you know, Darian's obviously he's been around and, and very good wrestler. So that's going to be a fun one to watch. Um, Samat's really, really skilled in, uh, especially in the freestyle positions. Um, and he does, he just does not have boring matches. So it's going to be fun. I'm excited about that one. And I think, uh, 
he is one of the guys that Nico trains with a lot. Yeah. So Nico probably is going to have a really good insight on that one, right? Yeah. I can't wait for that. That'll be cool to hear Nico talk about that. And then Nico obviously wrestled uh, against uh, Darian Cruz a bunch. So. Yeah, Samat's training at Nico's house right now. So because we can't <laughs> we can't have him in our facility, so they're uh, they're pretty tight. So Nico will know a lot about him. I love it. That's awesome. Uh, looking at some other things on the card, you know, I'm, I got the card in front of me. I'm looking down at it. Mm-hmm. I should probably get like a teleprompter or something so that I don't have to look <laughs> down. But That's all right. uh, you know, looking at it though, Carly Gross versus uh, Elena Gill. Okay. Yeah. Having women on the card, how important was that? Uh, having women on the card and and being inclusive of women's wrestling, uh, yeah. PA is trying to sanction girls wrestling right now. How important is that movement right now and having women on the card for Pittsburgh Wrestling Club? Yeah, it's huge. And it was, it was uh, something that, you know, honestly, we were pretty stressed about. And I reached out to a few different people because I was, we struck out a couple times, just bad luck. You know, we tried to get a girl on that. Um, she got injured and so she couldn't do it. And, and it was just, we had a, a couple of those kind of string of bad lucks. And so I started to get worried about it, but, um, but we were able to pull it off. And so I'm, I'm really excited and, and, you know, shout out to Lock Haven cause they've really helped us. Uh, and both those girls wrestle at Lock Haven. Um, they helped us kind of put this, put this together and, and, uh, we're, we're happy that, that we're able to do that because like you said, PA's, you know, in the fight to sanction women's wrestling. And, and we think, I mean, it's a no brainer at this point, you know, so, uh, to be able to showcase that, I think, uh, it'd be pretty cool. How many kids do you have, Keith? I got four kids now. I just had another one uh, two weeks ago. Boys, girls, what do you got? I got three girls, one boy. The boy, I go girl, boy, girl, girl. Okay. So this is the, I, the reason I ask you, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Is there an opportunity potentially for the Gavin girls t- to be a part of Pennsylvania wrestling? Yeah, you would hope so. I mean, my kids are young. So, I mean, it, it, it's, I feel like this. it's coming soon, you know, and, uh, I think that, yeah, you know, I'd be, um, obviously we're, you know, we're full support of it. And I think that it's, it should happen soon, you know? Um, but yeah, my kids, uh, my two year olds probably going to be the wrestler in the family. You know, she's, she's already whooping up on everybody. So what are the ages? Uh, six, four, two and two weeks. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Are you I sure? Was, are you positive? I was sure after three. So. <laughs> but, uh, oh, I love it. I love it, man. How many kids do you have? I have two. I have two boys. Two oh, nice. boys, uh, f- uh, four and three. Nice. With the wrestling practice last night, the uh, oh, yeah. four-year-old's got a mean half Nelson, man. Really? He's turning everybody with – he turned to two or three different partners last night with a half. Yeah. Um, but making it enjoyable and, like, probably what you do a lot, Keith, I can only guess, but having your kids around it, yeah, that's the biggest part of it. Not like get out there and do drills yeah, and yeah, yeah. Need to do this. Like yeah. um, having them around it, letting them learn like the body kinetics of it, the body awareness of it, the strength. Yeah, think, like what kind of what uh, Herbert and Rovat, their big thing, like the base. Yeah, they got something there, man. And and uh, you probably know this, but uh, Samat probably was trained under that system, is my guess. Yeah, where it's not about getting a thousand matches in Tulsa and this, that, and the other. Yeah. It's, getting around it, developing, learning to play. Yeah. Right. Those, that, that's just my approach, Keith. I don't know about you. Yeah. But. No. Yeah. I, I mean, you definitely can't force them into it and, and it's not going to go well. Uh, my son's only four, you know, but he's, he loves wrestling right now, but he has to, he doesn't like, he's never really done it. You know, he loves uh, just rolling around, you know? Um, so we'll see. You just want to kind of keep that, uh, keep that going but yeah Samat obviously you know he trained in that system and he has a totally different perspective which is nice to have around you know I remember the funny story like on my first year we weren't very good the team wasn't very good you know we were losing a lot and uh we had a practice where it, it was bad you know and, and I was just like sitting against the wall next to Samat and I said something to the effect of like man we look our guys are wrestling bad you know and I don't know what to do and and Samat, like, you know, he's new to everything. And he, he said something. Uh, and he said, well, he said, that's because you make them wrestle every week. And I was like, like, make them make weight and wrestle, you know? And I was like, no, I don't do that. That's our, that's our season. That's our schedule. You know? <laughs> he was just like, of course they're not going to do well. They're, you make, they keep making weight. But uh, <laughs> he couldn't get his head around that. Like, why do you guys wrestle so much, you know? 
and I, listen, I'm not even going to do the offshoot of this because we could talk all day. You know, Dave Habit, if, if he could talk all day about, he was like, hey, man, if, I, if you bring my kids up, I can talk about them all day. He goes, I'm going to yeah. make a point to not, you know, he told me off. He's like, I have to make a point of not bringing my kids up. He goes, I love yeah. them so much. And they're the, they're, he just loves them. He could talk about them. I'm guessing you're like yeah. that. But the thing I'll yeah. talk about, why wrestlers dominate MMA, mm -hmm. D1, D2, D3, NAI, whatever you want to, it's because they've got so many weigh-ins that you guys go 18, yeah. 22 weigh-ins a year, Keith. Yeah. They do more weigh-ins in a college D1, 2, 3 NAI season than any yeah. MMA guy, than most MMA guys will do yeah. in a career sometimes. Think about that. Think about the yeah. way you're preparing your guys and just how uh, tough it is. I think it also helps. It, th there is a benefit to it with uh, international wrestling, too, you know, just of, of the, the grind that we go through. Um, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword, but you could see it where – especially now, you know, the same day weigh-ins, um, that kind of stuff, it, it, it could help us, you know, we, when Snyder beat Sajulayev, his, um, Sad, he, he, he outworked him, you know, and uh, Sajulayev probably hasn't felt that very often, you know, so um, I think that that it does, the grind definitely helps us uh, in some ways, but also it hurts you in some ways too, you know, it's kind of a, like I said, double-edged sword. You know, the, the biggest thing with that, if you're talking Sajulayev, Snyder, if you're talking uh, Yazdani Charati, David Taylor, you can see that they get those guys tuckered out. Oh, yeah. And, Keith, as you know, a lot of people don't understand this. If you go to the, the Worlds, you go to the Olympics, uh, and, you know, and I used to go to the uh, World Cup as a kid, right? Mm -hmm. The amount of wrestling that you do, <laughs> world-class yeah. wrestling that you do in three hours – is yeah. something it, it's really hard to simulate and train for that people don't realize how quick those matches are some of those matches yeah. are only 25 30 minutes apart yeah it is wild i couldn't believe it when i was in london i'm like oh my god burrows has got he's got uh, gentry he's got yeah uh, he's got uh the who's back he's got uh he's got sarkoosh he's got these three guys and it seemed like it was in yeah. like an hour is what it felt like yeah, it's better now that they split it in two days. But, you know, when, when I wrestled, it was all one day, and it was one day for a long time. And, uh, yeah, you'd come – I remember we wrestled Worlds in 2013. Tyrell had one that was like – remember he had a tough match. I forget who it was against, but it was a, it was a good win. And he was up, like, no lie, 15 minutes later, you know. And, no, uh, yeah, that's what I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe uh, the matches that they had. I think – man, I want to say – Burroughs might have had to give and and yeah. and Matt Gentry and like yeah. Gizo Pete's and uh, Dennis Sargucci. I might be wrong, but at 2012, I was like, because I had been to Worlds before. I had been to uh, World Cup, obviously, all through being a kid. But you yeah. don't you don't know that you're not uh, aware of the scheduling when you look at the World yeah. Cup, right? Yeah. But as a kid, at least, right? Like it'd be like taking your kids to stuff. Now they know they were there, but maybe they don't remember. <laughs> how it was broken down but yeah. you know as far as making it a two-day event two-way-in event like mm -hmm. you're saying mm -hmm. if it's a two-day two-way-in event that that benefits us yes yeah yeah they were again talking about Samat uh when they did that I think it was Bill Farrell was his first that was the first time he's ever did a same day weigh-in you really? know and he was like uh he's not big for the weight like he's a he's a small guy and um he was asking me all sorts of questions about like what he should eat afterwards. And like, he was really worried about it, you know, cause he's never, never had that before. Um, ended up being fine. Cause like I said, he wasn't really cutting weight, but, um, but yeah, you know, and then it, like, I realized like, wow, this is so, this is so foreign to him, you know? So yeah. it, it is two weigh-ins though. It's not like they get one way in it's two weigh-ins for two yeah. day events. Yeah. So that, like you're saying that benefits us. Yeah, yeah, it's because that's what we do all the time. Yes, yeah, what we do all the time throughout. It's crazy. Uh, you guys college. do three weigh-ins. Think about that. His yeah. head would explode. <laughs> yeah. The head would explode if he went to the NCAs. He'd be like, "Why are you making weight?" Mm -hmm. Think about it. Your guys, your guys, Mickey, example. Yeah. Mickey makes weight three times if he goes, to, you know, NCAs. That's yeah. more times than Sajulayev will make weight in a year. Yeah. yeah. Am I wrong? Yeah. Yeah. yeah crazy right i know that's wild man okay so what matchup on the pittsburgh wrestling card are you most excited about keith gavin 
Man, that's tough because they're all, you know, well, they're my, you know, they're all my guys. So it's like I'm, I'm interested to see them all wrestle. I'm really happy that we could put it together because, um, you know, it's our season's coming up soon, and, and we want these guys want these guys to to get some good competition. And and all of these matches are are competitive matches. Like there's no really one side one side of match on this card. Um, so, you know, obviously. Uh, uh, Pletcher and Habit, I think I'm excited for that one. Um, again, like just what I said earlier is that, you know, Habit has good freestyle experience and, and Luke has been working on some stuff in the practice room to so to see him go out there and try it against someone that, uh, as experienced as Dave is is something I'm looking forward to. Um, but really a lot of our guys, uh, Nino Bonacorsi has recently put on some weight, you know, so I want to see, he's been, he's been wrestling, wrestling senior nationals and stuff, and he's, he looked pretty good, but again, he's been um, kind of coming into his own in this new weight, and so this, I'm looking forward to seeing how he, how he wrestles. He's going to wrestle 197 this year in college, so um, I'm looking forward to that, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, even, you know, even our first match, our, our 25 pounder, Lewis Newell has a tough one with uh, Lock Haven's 25, uh, Luke Warner, and that gets pretty good. And, and Warner beat our, our other 25 pounder last year. So I'm interested to see how Lewis does um, in that match as well. So there's a really up and down the card. I mean, like I said, they're, they're super competitive. Um, and I'm looking forward to, to each of those kind of for their own reason. You know, so you coached with Scott Moore at uva correct or did you miss no, each other didn't. no did you miss each other yeah yeah he was gone uh i coached with jordan who coached with me here so and jordan uh, at uva right yep yeah okay so when you look at these connections that you guys have and obviously lock haven being in you know pennsylvania it doesn't hurt right right but you know when you have these connections and these guys are all trying to make this work man because we're all we're all in this covid thing together right it's a pandemic it's it's tough man Every opportunity they can get someone on the mat, I mean, they're jumping at it. They're jumping at it. There's no question about it, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, we have some – Stefanik wrestled for Princeton, and they, you know, they canceled their season. So, um, it's a good opportunity for him to get to get a match in. And so, yeah, you know, I think we've all been working together, and, and these other coaches and other clubs have been awesome to work with. And I think that's what everybody's been saying when putting these cards together because this is such a unique time, and, and uh, yeah. yeah have to if we're gonna get if we're gonna get some matches in and, and put these things together we gotta work together and, and these guys are great cj brucky's uh njrtc right so him and stefanik yeah. will probably warm up and travel together you look at mm -hmm. that right and like you said the ivies have canceled i i you know i kind of want to shift gears to pit wrestling a little bit more i want to i want to shift some gears to nc i don't know how much time you got how much time can you take a gander at the clock real quick there coach gavin uh yeah I'm, i got we got practice at one so one so you got yeah you got about, about 20 minutes or yeah you, or is it a walk for you what's that is it a walk at all for you or are you just right there what do you mean to practice you're right there you don't have oh, yeah, yeah. yeah you're right walking here. right there and you're there yeah. yep it yeah. don't start until you show up anyway you're the boss <laughs> right? right am i i'm not wrong am i you're the boss <laughs> forget tony danza you're yeah. the boss so okay <laughs> looking at pit wrestling a season this is just, we have no idea. I just saw a thing come out from the coaches association. If it's over 51% of the teams competing, you will have a regular bracket. Did you see that as well or not? Yeah. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Where do you think we are? I mean, listen, man, I know this changes by the hour. Where do you yeah. feel like we're at? I don't know. I, I think we're good right now. Um, you know, I worried about some of the, I still I still don't understand what some of the PSAC schools are doing. You know, I think that Lock Haven's done uh, for the year, um, but they said it could change. But reevaluate is yeah, I believe the word. Yeah, but as far as I know, Clarion is still is still planning on going. They're in the PSAC, so so I'm not sure where some of those schools are. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we lose a couple more. Um, you know, maybe from the NWA and stuff. But I think that the big five or the the Power Five conferences, they'll probably all be in it and and. Uh, that that EIWA conference is huge. There's a ton of teams in that. So as long as uh, you know, a good majority of them wrestle in it, we should be all right. I think. Yeah, three service academies. Obviously, I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the Big Twelve is obviously Air Force, but the three service academies, you just got to expect them to go. Right? Mm -hmm. They're going to go. 
Yeah, we're, that's our first duels against Navy this year. Is it Navy? Okay, cool. And then, um, so the ACC six schools, yeah. and it feels, does it feel pretty, are you getting a good vibe from the six ACC schools right now? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, I'm pretty sure that we're all, and in, in our administrations are all, you know, going to uh, I'm making this happen. So you guys are going to be a one-day tournament again this year if, if yep. the tournament takes place where it was at uh, Peterson Event Center last year at Pitt. Yeah. Where will it be this year? So it was supposed to be at UVA this year, but um, we moved it a week earlier because of the, the situation with COVID in case someone was contact traced from at the tournament or something like that. You'd have enough time to, to compete at the Nationals. Uh, so it's a week earlier, so they moved. Uh, NC State's going to host it now. NC State. So it's February 28th is what I saw for the Southern Conference. It's just, yeah, it's the same for us. Now. It's same, okay. All right. Yeah, I was just wondering about that. Um, as far as COVID protocols and everything that you're doing, I see it all across the spectrum, Keith. Uh, talking to Dave Havitt yesterday, he has to do a COVID test every day. Yeah. What are you guys currently tied to at Pitt as far as a COVID test? So he's probably talking about they do like those rapid antigen tests. Yeah, I, I, and it's and it's self it's so, self administered. Yeah, we do what's called PCR test here at Pitt, and so it's you know the the thing up your nose, uh, the swab up your nose. We do it once a week. We go every Tuesday, and then uh, once we start competing, it's three times a week. And so that's kind of the protocol right now. And then for practice, we're in two groups. Okay. So what? Yeah, and it's just there's just so many no rhyme or reason to some of the things that they're doing. I, you know, I don't understand it. I get that it's mitigation that you're trying to, to slow the virus rather than have it spread and go herd immunity. Like I, I, and I understand that end of it and I understand the science of it. Some of the things are just, I don't know. I, I scratch my head. I scratch my head on Pennsylvania and Ohio. I know Ohio, we're not, the kids don't shake hands. Mm -hmm. I believe you guys probably aren't going to be shaking hands either. They yeah. literally just did the most physical thing that you can do as far as touching, and then they can't shake hands. There's just like, that's a head scratcher for me. And I'm not asking you to comment on that. For me personally, it's a head scratcher. And I know that they're the rules that are handed down to you. Keith Gavin's going to do what he has to do to keep yeah. the, the Panthers on the mat. And I, and I get that. I understand that, you know, like, yeah. but it's wild to me. You know, Dave, Dave Habit did a test for me yesterday on camera. Oh, really? I can't share. He was like, hey, man, don't no post this video. I'm like, yeah, no, no problem. I go, I just want to see it. I just want to see it. I want to see what you're doing. Does he did the, do the nose? Is that what he that went is? way up his nose. I was like, dude, you're going to poke your brain, Dave. Yeah. You're going to poke your brain. Yeah. yeah, they do it here for you. They'll poke your brain for you here. Oh. But uh, that's, a, I mean, that's what I always think, like, when they send those home tests. It's like, man, you got to be – it's pretty trustworthy. It's yeah. It's all like uh, contacts. Like, I'll never be able to touch my eyes. Yeah. The contact people, whenever you learn contacts, I, I'm, that's a, I'm not in that breed of people. <laughs> my dna is not wired like that coach yeah. gavin I, I don't know um any other parting shots on december 22nd rockfin live pletcher versus dave habit uh beginning at six o'clock december 22nd undercard for Nittany line wrestling club correct yeah so they uh theirs ended up being the same day and and we were trying to figure out when they were going to do theirs and and just, you know, it's, it's going to work out because we had the flexibility to move our time up. So we're going to go at 6 p.m. I think they're going to start at 8 p.m. Um, so, yeah, it will work. But I think, you know, with these cards going on, Wisconsin doing it, and I think UNC's, you know, they did one. I don't, I don't think there's a rock thing. But, but anyways, it's a uh, – this is just a great opportunity for wrestling. You know, we uh, – it's pretty cool that during this pandemic and, and you know, we're faced with some uncertain times that – people in the wrestling world figured it out, you know, and we're, we're putting these cards together. And, and I think that if they go well, I know for us, I mean, if this, if this goes well, we're going to do another one, you know, and, and it's a great opportunity for our kids um, and for the wrestling community and the, for the sport to grow. And I think that we're seeing the benefit of that uh, already and it, it can only get better. So we're excited to be a part of it. You know, I'm happy that everybody involved was able to uh, help us put this on and, and we're looking forward to it. I remember you, you know, you, you wrote me an email. Hey, Zeb, what's your interest level coming and doing this yeah. event? And I was like, oh, yeah, maybe. I go, but if it's on Rockfin, it'd be better. And you're like, well, yeah, it is on Rockfin. <laughs> you're like, oh, yeah, hey, Zeb, as a matter of fact, it is on Rockfin. Have you yeah. had any conversations with Martin Floriani? We obviously yeah. know that that guy's a visionary, started Flow Wrestling. It's named after him. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, but 
Martin, Martin's a, he's a hound, man. The guy yeah. is just a, he does not take no for an answer and he really works at it. Did you have any conversations or contact with Martin about Rockfin and having Pittsburgh wrestling club? Yeah, we had a meeting and it was pretty, it was easy because, so here's what happened with it was, um, I didn't understand it, you know, when, uh, when Nittany Lion was doing theirs, um, I, I wanted to do it because I was like, oh, this is a great, great opportunity for our guys to get to wrestle and for our fans to be able to see them. But I didn't understand how Rockman worked. But one of the guys that I'm friends with um, and uh, helps our, our program out, uh, the, the Pittsburgh Wrestling Club, is a software developer, uh, our own software company. And so we were talking. And he said, look, I think you really got to, you, if you're going to do this, you got to go with Rockman. You know, he said, it's the future. Um, you know, he thinks this is a genius idea and it could set you up for the long term benefit of your program. Uh, and this is a guy that, you know, I trust, uh, very well. And so, you know, when he said that, it's like, all right, if you're behind it, I'm sold, you know? So we met with, we met with Martin, uh, he and I both did, we had just a couple questions and, and Martin answered them and it was, it was a done deal. You know, we were ready to roll. Awesome coach. December 22nd live six o'clock Pletcher habit. We'll probably see that around six between seven thirty and eight. We've got the backpack yeah. and Mickey Phillippe going at it. Yeah. We've got some really, really, really good matchups. We've got a NCAA champion, Darian Cruz from mm -hmm. Lehigh. He'll be there. I'm just – I'm so excited about it, man. It's going to be a great card. Any chance for a fat man size in a pit wrestling hoodie or sweats? Is there any chance? Yeah, sure, sure. I'm, I'm just asking. I mean, yeah, i got to no, ask for it. We can hook you up. I and like that. Probably get you like a Buckos hat too to replace that Indians one. <laughs> well, while well, they're replacing the name of the team, you know. <laughs> How about you guys are really bad? Like you're not good. The Pittsburgh yeah. Pirates are horrible. Yeah, no, they're terrible. I it's can't a, believe a, it. It's a beautiful ballpark, though. Best yeah. ballpark in Major League Baseball. Legit. Yeah. yeah. Walking over the Clemente Bridge yeah. is like a rite of passage that is like no other. I couldn't believe it because they shut that bridge down. Yeah. For the, on game day, you get to walk across the middle of the bridge, and it's just yeah. a big yellow bridge. Yeah, you know, you're right on the river. Ah, oh, yeah, it's a, cool yeah, it's a great stadium. Great it stadium. Is. It's a very cool experience. So maybe they yeah, can, awesome. Have to go. <laughs> I love it, Coach. Yeah. Okay, what time? I'll, I'll be there earlier in the day. We got workouts. Probably gonna talk to Coach Bella Glazov. He's coming. Yeah. Yeah. I'm excited about that. Pantaleo is my most likely gonna be there. Yeah. Obviously, there's going to be some Princeton guys there, some some yeah. NJRTC guys. I'm excited about that. I mean, yeah. I'm just fired up. Uh, I really want to meet uh, your guy. I want to meet the your. Yeah, you got to talk to him. He's got he's got some up. Yeah, he's got a. Uh, oh, he's got, some he's got, he's got an incredible story, man. He was delivering pizzas when I got here, you know, and now he's like. And this guy was runner up in the Asian championships and fifth in the world, you know, just hanging out in Pittsburgh. I want to talk uh, to Samat. I actually want, here's what I want. I want to video Samat mm -hmm. talking to Bala Glazov and then I'm going to have yeah. Diaka Mahalas uh, translate it. Yeah. I don't know if you saw that. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. It's hilarious. Yeah. I think uh, having Sergey there could help because they'll be able to, to talk to each other. I don't speak Russian or, or Kyrgyz, but I'm pretty good at broken English. So. Okay, we've got 12 minutes before practice, Coach. Thank you for the time. Stick around real quick. i got to talk to you off camera. I appreciate it, Coach Gavin. We will see you December 22nd, 6 p.m., live on Rockfin. Big match, Habit versus Pletcher, live.